Today we're going to talk about the fundamentals of importing images off a CF card into your Aperture library. There's two ways to do it. One, we can designate Aperture to manage the library. This is referred to as a managed library. Aperture pulls all the pictures into its library. It's contained all in its library file on, your, on a hard drive. The other is referenced. This way you import the pictures into the library except the pictures are copied to a folder of your choice on a hard drive. You tell it where the images go and you can see them in the finder. There's advantages to both. Referenced, you can get to the pictures and use them for other things without having to export them or do anything in Aperture. There's a lot of advantages of that for some people's workflow. In my case, I have to move these images to uh, hard drives at work, so that's why I do it. And there's also uh, issues with regard to filling up hard drives and then you have to start a new library if it's managed or whatever. But the beauty of a managed library in Aperture is that it takes care of all the heavy lifting. You always know where your pictures are because they're in the library and you never have any broken links or anything like that. If you move the pictures in a reference library and move them somewhere and you break the link, you've got to, you know, reconnect them back up. So that's, you know, it's a little more labor intensive. It's not a big deal, but it's definitely uh, a chore that needs to be handled with care. Let's start off right away by plugging my CF card into my CF card reader and here they are, they, they show up in the import window. Now I'm going to go through this real quick on the import settings. These are things you need to deal with uh, right away in setting up the import. And a lot of this stuff you only have to do once unless you want to change something. So uh, file info, I'm going to add that in here. If we click on a photo, it gives us the data, you know, the file name, the size, the dimensions, all that sort of stuff. Very self-explanatory. The Aperture Library, this uh, little brick is really important because you're telling it where you want your stuff to go. And this is the key to telling it if you want a managed or referenced. And it's a little bit confusing for people, I've found, because it doesn't say managed or referenced. It says in the Aperture Library. When it says in the Aperture Library, it is managed. Now that is a managed import. From there, it will take them, put them in your project, and it will be contained inside the Aperture Library file. Now, if you're coming on, off of a hard drive, you're in, importing pictures from a folder sitting on a hard drive into a reference library, you're going to want to say in their current location. And when you do that, let's say you're going to click on, you know, here's my, uh, my iMac, right? So you're going to click on, let's say we're going to import these pictures. Uh, here they are, but they're sitting on a thing. So we would say we don't want to move them. We don't want them to end up somewhere else. We want them to stay right where they're at. We would say, see now it's lit up, in their current location. Very simple. So let's do it off of a card. We're going to click on the card up here in the import and we're not going to say in the aperture library. We're going to tell it where we want it. In this case, you know, you can go to choose and navigate to the thing. Uh, I've already done that and I want it in 2011 personal folder. Now inside that folder, I don't want the images just floating around in that folder because I have a bunch of other folders in there. I want to say subfolder project name. It doesn't have to be project name. You can name it anything. You can do a custom name or you could do uh, one of their preset names. Project name means that it will correspond precisely to the name of the project. I think it makes a lot of sense. Perfect symmetry. Project name in the Aperture Library, folder name on the hard drive. Makes perfect sense to me. Let's see, uh, okay, rename files. I don't use this, I don't rename my files. Uh, I want them to be master file name, so I don't have that show up at all. But if you do rename your files, 
you'll want to, um, it, it will rename them on import and you can do that any way you choose. I'm going to unclick that because I don't want to do that. Uh, metadata presets. You can see here I have a bunch of metadata presets. I can choose none and not have anything attached to these images. Or, in this case, I've already filled this out with the proper keywords and all that. I can have them attached to this import as I went on the import. I click import, boom. The, when I go look at them, the metadata will be there. Very simple. Let's see after metadata. Adjustment presets. Very powerful feature, which I rarely use, but it's, it's, it's really uh, helpful if you have one type of a shoot, hundreds or even thousands of images that are all the same, same exposure, everything, and you want to add uh, a, a set amount of adjustments. Let's say you want to add a little contrast, maybe a little curves adjustment, definite, whatever you want. You make that preset and you can select it here. The pictures, the way I shoot doesn't really like that. Every picture is a little different and I adjust them differently. It's not a one size fits all approach. It's custom. So we'll uh, take that off and disappear that. File types. This is uh, a useful thing. You can exclude videos, exclude photos, uh, audio files, whatever. Let's say you shoot video and stills on the same card, but you know you're going to work on the video in Final Cut. Maybe you don't want them in your Aperture Library. You would hit just hit exclude videos and those videos would not be imported. RAW plus JPEG pairs. Um, that's always a good thing to do, and, and there's a lot of different options there. Rob Boyer on his blog talks quite a bit about that. If you're curious about it, I, I recommend going there. He's an expert at doing that and has written quite a bit about it. In my case, I either shoot all RAW or all JPEG, so it's really not that big of a deal. So I'm going to disappear that. I don't need to see it. Uh, actions are for Apple scripts and I have an Apple script loaded in here for when I do big, huge, hours long imports of thousands of images. I have a script in here that will email me and say your Aperture import is complete. You know, I don't use that a lot but I have used it and it's pretty cool I think having Aperture email you about stuff. So I'm going to disappear that because I don't need that. Uh, backup location, another very powerful tool. Uh, you can send it to two locations. In this case, we're sending one copy to uh, 2011 personal in my case on one hard drive. If I wanted to send it to my Drobo, I could navigate to that and tell it to send it there as well. But I don't do that. So I'm going to disappear that right now. And that's it. I've told it where I want it to go. I have set my metadata preset and that's that. Now one thing I need to do, and I could have done this before explaining all that, is I'm going to right click on a project and say duplicate project structure. And I do that because all my projects are the same. I have them set up with smart folders and things of that nature. So I duplicated the project structure. It's now an empty project and I'm going to rename it. In this case, I always use the date. I hit the letters DT, which uh, Typeinator will automatically infill that style of date. I'll hit underscore and say Columbia Gorge. Now, you'll see it also corresponds over here. Uh, it'll say Columbia Gorge right here. That means it's going to go in the 2011 personal in a folder named exactly as I have named this project with my metadata. And with that, uh, we have to decide which pictures we want to import on this card. On a small shoot like this, uh, it comes up default as um, all checked, the check all, everything's checked. If you hit import, all the pictures will go in, but you don't have to do it like that. You can uncheck all and then maybe just select a few. Um, you can select, uh, let's say, basically half and say check all. You can take this selection and maybe select that many and drag them in if you choose. This is really helpful if you have more than one shoot or more than one project on a card. 
<coughs> if you want to to send half to one project and the other half to another, these are the this is the way you do it. There's several ways to get there, but um, it's your choice. So with all that, it's very simple. We hit import checked, and you'll see these um, the metadata is there already on all these pictures. We've dealt with that, so we can go. We can set about rating the pictures, and uh, I'm going to go through here real quick. Um, I kind of know what I want. I'm going to hit a one star on that. Maybe a one star on that. And I'm just going to rate these real quick. And that's all there is to it. Now I can go to my um, library. <coughs> Excuse me. And there it is, the, car, the pictures are imported. I did all that, uh, rated them and, and all that. While it was being imported, they were still on the card. Now I'm gonna hit eject card. And with that, I can take the card out of the card reader and set it aside. If I have another card, I can do the same thing. Let's say I shot two cameras, whatever. I can do multiple imports. Uh, okay, I think that covers the fundamentals of importing. That's all there is to it. Thank you very much.